It is time to finally talk about the RTX 3070 partner cards that have been brewing on my test benches for the last couple of weeks. So I already reviewed the Founders Edition two days ago and today I'm going to add a few more cards to that mix. I'm going to do a little comparison between them uh, to see which one is the fastest, which one has the most efficient cooler, uh, which one has the best RGB and which one offers the best overall package. So next to the NVIDIA's Founders Edition right here, I have the usual bunch. So the Gaming OC from Gigabyte, the Gaming X Trio from MSI and the ROG Strix from ASUS. And if all goes well, this time around, these cards will be available in stores starting today. So let's begin and see how they compare. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Let's first see where 3070 stands in general and what should you expect from it. So in short, the 3070 should primarily be considered as a great Quad HD GPU as it manages to perform exceptionally well at that resolution, playing most games at high settings and high refresh rates. It is just behind a fast overclocked RTX 2080 Ti and considerably faster than the RTX 2070 Super, which was considered a good Quad HD GPU until now. If you're looking for a 4K gaming experience, the RTX 3070 will play most games great at or just over 60 FPS, but I do think that an RTX 3080 is a better choice instead as it's around 30% faster on average at that resolution. For 1080p, the 3070 does great, obviously, but it is an overkill, so unless you're playing competitive, I would say you should probably wait and see how a cheaper 3060 Ti will do instead. For more details on the RTX 3070, check out my Founders Edition review from two days ago. I'll put a link in the description down below. But for now, let's focus on how these 3070s compare to each other. Let's start with the design and dimensions of each card. NVIDIA's Founders Edition is by far the smallest with a length of 24 centimeters. It is exactly two slots thick and around 12 centimeters deep which will be a good thing for anyone working with a small case. It is made completely out of metal and I would say it is extremely well built. And even though it does come to personal preference, I do think it's a very elegant, very good looking card. Gigabyte's Gaming OC is a little bit larger, being 29 centimeters long and two and a half slots thick, but it's not as large as their 3080 Gaming OC, meaning it will still fit a lot of mid-size cases. You do get a bit of a bigger heatsink than on the FE, and the shroud is plastic, but the back plate is made of metal. The design here is quite simple, I would say, but I think the color scheme is just something that will match well with most other components. The MSI's Gaming X Trio definitely looks a bit more impressive with its bigger fans and that more flashy design. It is a lot longer than the Gigabyte, which will work really well in large ATX towers, but not as much in smaller cases. I think it's another great looking card in general and it is built quite well too. The back plate is made of that graphene plastic combination, which is completely fine, but the proper metal one on the Gigabyte card does feel a little bit better. Still, I think it's a design that a lot of people will appreciate and ultimately go for. And the ROG Strix is even bigger and bulkier. It is a three slot card with a length of almost 32 centimeters. It is really heavy too, so it's definitely trying to appeal to anyone who thinks that the thickest and the heaviest GPU is the best GPU. Design wise, the Strix is pretty much exactly like the 3090 we've seen before. Uh, it is a very attractive card and it is also very sturdy and very well built. If you are after a lot of RGB, uh, both MSI and ASUS offer plenty. MSI has a straightforward light bar and the logo and a couple of extra lines light up as well, while the ROG has a slightly more elegant LED bar on the front, which again, I personally think is just enough and it looks great. Now, Gigabyte does have an RGB logo and one little line under it as well, but I would say it's not enough to really call it a design feature, in my opinion. 
Of course, all these cards can sync up with motherboards from the same brand, or you know, you can just turn it off if you prefer. And if you absolutely don't want even a glimpse of RGB, the Founders Edition doesn't have any. When it comes to features, they all have a fan stop feature, which is pretty much a standard these days. And it does help to keep the cards quiet under light load and it saves the fan life in the long run. Now, only Gigabyte and Asus come with a dual BIOS switch, uh, allowing you to choose between a louder but cooler BIOS and a slightly warmer but silent one. Now, a dual BIOS also helps if you're trying to push an overclock or flash your BIOS, and it's just a very good feature to have. Now, for the Founders Edition, I'm completely fine with it not being there since this should be the cheapest RTX 3070 you can buy, but I do think that MSI should include this feature on their Gaming X trios. Now, both FE and the Gaming OC and the Gaming X trio have standard connection layout of three DisplayPort 1.4 ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, while the ROG Strix here offers a second HDMI port. So, if you need more than one HDMI, Strix is the way to go. The cards also take a different approach on how to power them. The Founders Edition uses NVIDIA's new 12-pin power connector, but it includes an adapter to connect it to one traditional 8-pin header instead, which I find a bit odd. So I'm completely all in for having one little 12-pin uh, connection instead of two 8-pin connections on the 3080s, because it is much more elegant to have just one cable, but adding this short, bulky adapter to just one 8-pin cable makes very little sense to me. If you're using a seasonic power supply like me, you can actually ask them for a specific cable instead. I'll put a link in the description below on how to do that. And this cable not only has a higher power potential, but it is also much better for cable management than using this little bulky adapter from Nvidia. Now, both MSI and ASUS went for the traditional 2x8 pin layout, uh, giving it a lot of power headroom as well while Gigabyte here decided to use an 8-pin and a 6-pin connector instead. Now, most power supplies only come with 6 plus 2-pin cables, uh, very rarely with a straight-up 6-pin cable, so that means in order to connect that 6-pin on the Gaming OC, you will have those two extra pins just dangling about, and in my opinion, that just looks messy. I'm completely fine with 6-pin headers on entry-level GPUs, but on a card in this class, I just don't think it fits. But let's see how these cards actually perform. And this topic is a little bit complicated because of the way NVIDIA GPUs just work these days. So unlike uh, what their specs suggest on paper, all these cards will actually boost a lot higher, assuming they're not getting too hot or not running into a power limit. So looking at the raw clock speeds uh, when stressing the cards, there is actually not much of a difference between them with only 60 megahertz between the fastest and the slowest one. So to translate that into some real performance, I would say it is basically nothing, uh, 3% at the very best. And not only is that something that you will never actually notice, you also have to remember that no two cards are exactly the same. So if you were to test another sample of each of these cards, it is very likely that some cards would be a bit slower or a bit faster. So I would say in terms of pure speed, I just cannot say that one of these cards is truly faster than the other three. But what we can really judge on is the thermal and noise performance here. And uh, here we do see some significant differences between the cards. Now, looking at the GPU temperatures, uh, it is very clear that the larger cards are keeping the chip considerably cooler. I mean, 14 degrees is a huge difference. 71 degrees on the Founders Edition is completely fine, but I would say the other three are definitely much, much better. If we now bring noise measurements in, it is worth pointing out that all of these cards are actually very quiet. Even the loudest one, uh, which would be the Gigabyte in its performance BIOS, is still barely audible. MSI does take the win here as the quietest of them all, even though one decibel advantage doesn't seem like a lot, if you have both cards side by side, it is not insignificant. Now, the real test of cooler efficiency is how they perform when you normalize the noise, but you have to keep in mind that cards that consume more power also generate more heat. But, funnily enough, 
all four cards actually showed nearly identical power consumption, uh, both in GPU stress test and while gaming. So I would say there is nothing to set any of them apart power-wise. With each of the coolers set to 40 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, and having to deal with the same amount of heat, uh, we end up with the following graph uh, where you can exactly see what a larger heat sink and larger fans do to your GPU thermals. So uh, with their larger designs, Asus and MSI are keeping the card around 13 degrees cooler than the Founders Edition at the same noise level. Now Asus uh, just beats MSI here, but that half a degree difference is barely significant. And Gigabyte card falls in between those two extremes, and it just seems to hit a nice balance between size and efficiency. And last but not the least, these cards will differ in price, but for how much? I'm afraid I cannot really tell you that today, as it will completely depend on your region and most of all on availability. Now, I did get some prices in the EU, uh, but they are not set in stone and they might change by the time this video goes live. So, the Founders Edition is expected to be at MSRP and here in the EU, it will cost you between 500 and 520 euros depending on your country. Uh, I don't have the price for the Gigabyte card, but looking at previous generations, uh, Gaming OC was always around 50-ish euros above MSRP. Now, MSI communicated the price of 580 euros, while Asus mentioned the price of 680 euros, which I doubt will be the final price, because if it is, it would be impossible to justify buying the Strix over the cheaper cards or paying a bit more for a 3080 that will give you a significant performance boost. So I would say, please do take these numbers with a huge grain of salt as they're just recommended prices before the actual launch and you know make your decision based on the known pricing later today, if there is any stock at all. And that actually sort of sums up my whole roundup today. Now, obviously the bigger Asus and MSI cards turned out to be the most efficient, but they're also the biggest and will probably be the most expensive options. While Gigabyte here is really trying to hit more of a balance between price, size and efficiency. And the thing is, I think that's completely fine. I mean, even the Founders Edition, which really doesn't look that good compared to all these bigger cards, is objectively still completely fine. It is not too hot, it is not too loud, or even significantly slower. So it is great to show some of the differences between the cards in a test, but you still have to remember what it is that suits your own needs. So what will fit your case and what will fit your budget? Uh, I mean, just because one card is slightly better doesn't make the other three really bad. The very important thing to know here is that if you're looking for the raw gaming performance, don't expect paying a high premium price for your 3070 will actually give you much better frame rates. So you're mostly buying a particular design here. You're buying more RGB and you're buying a more efficient cooler design. I do think that the MSI does great, especially if you want a really quiet GPU, but they shouldn't cheap out on a couple of features that other cards do have. On the other hand, the ROG basically ticks all the boxes feature-wise, but it will probably end up costing a lot more over the MSRP to, you know, the point of just adding a bit more money and getting a cheaper 3080 instead that will actually give you a nice performance boost. But if you're looking for something that's a bit more modest, uh, I think that Gigabyte once again is doing very well with their gaming OC here. It does come with a couple of nice extras like the dual BIOS that I really love, as well as an extra year of warranty, which is extremely important. Uh, it performs really well and the price should be a bit more reasonable. So it might not win any graphs, but since the RTX 3070 is a mid-range GPU, I think a more reasonable model that doesn't ask for that high price premium just makes so much more sense here. And personally, I would say I would take any of the three cards over the Founders Edition since they are significantly more efficient, even though the FE is the cheapest. But let's be fair here as well. I really do like the design of the Founders Edition personally. I think it's a beautiful card and I think its real strength is its small size, making it a great pick for small cases where you just cannot fit a bigger card, but you still want that 2080 Ti level of performance. So it is not the best of them all by far, but it will still do just fine if you decide to go for that one. And I would say that's it 
for me today. I really hope you enjoyed this comparison and I hope I helped at least a bit in making your choice of which card would fit you the most. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to never miss an upload. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.